I think what you have to do is you have to know your landscape. You know, I was I was thinking about this for the for um the conference. One of the things that I did, and I didn't even know I was doing it, I did not start off in film school. I had no film uh, training experience. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I linked up with, um, with Suds, and he went to film school, but he didn't have any industry experience, and we didn't get jobs uh, off the top. But what we did was we really tried to figure out what the resources that were around, who the players were, and we really try to put a plan together based on what we understood was the industry. So we didn't wait for someone to tell us, you know? Like for example, we found out there were, and this is starting out, we found out there was the Ontario Arts Council, the Canada Council, um, you know, um, the, um, a few other, uh, Toronto Arts Council. Um, and so what we did, and we knew they were giving out money, so what we did was I set up meetings with the officers at the time, you know, to say, hey, you know, we have these projects, what do you need? So two things happened. One was um, we placed ourselves in front of the people who were administrating stuff. So when anything went wrong with their application, they would give mm -hmm. me a call and say, hey, you know what, this thing is missing, or hey, um, you know what, you guys, did you think about this? So, so knowing that landscape, talking to the people in power, all those kinds of things, that really was a good way to, to start creating stuff with support because we knew nobody. Well, the first TV product, now I did a bunch of documentaries. So I think, um, oh gosh, um, with, uh, maybe let's say Speakers for the Dead. Speakers for the Dead was a documentary film that we did with the National Film Board. And um, I think, oh my gosh, the challenges. The challenges was um, that I'd never done a documentary before. And I, um, we essentially, how that documentary came about, and I think this is maybe a part of it, is that I was reading the newspaper and there was a little tiny story in The Share, which is a community, black community newspaper, about a community called Priceville that, um, that uh, had black ancestors looking for or black descendants looking for their ancestors and that there was some kind of protest from some of the white members of the existing community because there were no black people left in that community. And I thought, this sounds crazy. Um, and so uh, I called up the number of one of the, the contacts there and he said, you know, come up to the community and meet with, with you. And so meet with him, and we did. And so we, we thought, when we realized that the first non-native settlers in that area were African um, Canadians, and they had been pushed out of that community, and some people didn't want the knowledge that the town was an originally a black town because some of them had actually uh, integrated uh, no longer looked black and didn't want that history out there. And so one of the challenges was convincing, you know, um, small town folks that we were not trying to be exploitative, that we really wanted to tell a powerful and important story, a story that a lot of people didn't know about. And it was, it was really a challenge. And I think what we did, though, was we persevered. We kept coming back. We, you know, we had weekly situations where we'd come and we'd stay in the town. You know, we also found um, a, a sort of a, a member of the community was very respected to shepherd us around. But, um, you know, we did not take no for an answer. You know, we really, um, uh, you know, there was even a black couple who, um, were descendants and were um, really important to the story and had said no, they wouldn't be interviewed. And, they, and the reason was because they, their history was they were probably related and they had gotten married, but because they didn't know their ancestry at the time of their marriage, they didn't know that. 
And so they were really nervous or concerned about how they would be depicted. Um, and, you know, but we convinced them through just going back and, you know, like being there and being around events and things like that. And they told the story and they told about, you know, their concern and the fact that they, you know, probably are related and those kinds of things. So, you know, it was our first project, our first documentary project. And, um, and, and so that was one of the big challenges. And then another challenge, and I have to tell you the God's honest truth, we hired a crew that was fairly diverse, but we were African, we were black, black Canadians. <laughs> and, um, you know, from the Caribbean, I was born in Jamaica, Sud's parents are Jamaicans, although he's Canadian. And we hired a diverse crew. But, you know, when people are raised to think of black people in a certain way, um, you know, it's still impacts on you whether you're Asian or South Asian and that's what happened and so on the shoot itself we had this mini mutiny happen where they were trying to tell us what to do like and it's our shoot <laughs> and when we wouldn't listen they were kind of trying to like it was almost like a little mini coup and um, you know uh, we had a PA who actually let us know what was going down and we stopped it in its tracks, but, um, you know, and then, you know, and the people apologized to us afterwards, you know, and, you know, through tears even. And I realized, you know, um, white privilege and supremacy is really powerful because, like I said, there was no white folks in that crew, but they perceived us in a certain way. Now, we were new at this you know, kind of a thing, but we knew what we wanted and they were trying to tell us that they knew better. And so I think when you're diverse, you know, you, the challenges are everywhere because um, people have a, per a perception that they have to overcome. And I have to tell you, there's not been a single production I've had where some version of that doesn't play out. It's not a mutiny per se now, you know, we're really experienced, but, but there is something, there's always something. And you know what? I don't take it personally and Suds doesn't take it personally. We know people come to the table with a certain point of view, but we don't accept it. We just said, this is not, we will not put up with it. And that's, that's a crazy story. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. That's like an hour. Like we need an hour just to cover that story. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah, but it's um, you know, you, you know, and I actually put it out of my mind in many, many ways because I, you know, you can't do this work if you dwell on those things. But, you know, but you need support and I had suds and I had our PA who came to us and alerted us. And so I think you know, one of the things you have to do is really try to hire people who um, who are open, you know, who uh, yeah. understand some of the issues that you're going through. And now that, that can't always be the case. And it's not a criteria because I've actually worked with wonderful people who are from, you know, from the dominant culture, all this kind of stuff. And, and some of my best crew people are, are that and they, we don't have those issues, but it, it happens. For me, what I've learned is that you don't know, but you have to use your best instincts. And I think if someone is on a similar wavelength, similar values around production, around ideas, not the same ideas, because it doesn't mean you only work with this kind of person or, or, or this culture or any of those things. No, it's like it's the fundamental things you believe in you know, as a human beings, you know, um, for me, I, my theory is, um, life is short and you have only so much work projects you can get done. So you need to work with people you respect and people you like. If you dislike this person, but think it's a great opportunity, you're going to have a world of pain. Now you might come through it with the product, but then you might not. So, but, is it worth it? You know, is it worth it to to compromise yourself to you know um, to um, to be with people who don't either respect you or don't um, you know or don't uh, have values that you respect? So that's one of the things. 
um, I think also you have to really appreciate the person's talent, like in a in a big way. You seek people whose talent is something that inspires you. And the third thing I think, and this is a little bit hard, and it's been hard for me, seek out people with greater knowledge who are who who are willing to put that knowledge out there. You know, sometimes I work with people with greater knowledge who have not been interested in sharing that knowledge. You know, or um, when you're sometimes the person with the greatest knowledge, or you think you are anyhow, you don't listen as well. And so that's one of the things I challenge myself. But those are some of the things I think about when I think about co-producing with other people, you know? And because um, I've had bad experiences. I had a very bad experience with a, a digital project that we were supposed to do that, um, you know, we work with some folks that, didn't have the kind of integrity that we have and it's and it's you know and cultures are different you know film cultures TV cultures so when you jump into it you gotta like I said know the landscape I I didn't take my own advice I think I learned that actually from that experience um, but knowing the landscape helps you a lot in terms of who you get in bed with because if the landscape of this if this culture is different from the one that you're willing to play in can be tough. Well, um, you know, so this, and you notice there's little purple flowers in there because he knows my favorite color is purple, and it's my walls. So you know what? I think, I think you. Okay, first of all, I love my husband. Um, I love him creatively. I love him as a human being, um, and and I think there we have a tremendous amount of respect for each other, and and do not get me wrong. It takes work to put the ego aside. It takes work to, um, like you know, to not make no's or criticism about you. It really does. But we we have another mantra, another motto, and that is, you know, the best idea should win. And so we do we do duke it out about what the best idea is. Um, but we have so much respect for each other. We know that we're there for each other, starting from experiences like, you know, um, Speakers for the Dead, where we had that crazy mutiny. We are there for each other. And, um, and also, because we are a family, because we have kids, you know, we try to create an environment whereby... You know, you have long days. It's tough. You're over budget. You're in, you feel like, oh, my God. Uh, am I going to be able to deliver this? There's so much pressure on you. So wherever we can, whenever we could, we try to, to, to approach stuff with both kindness and inclusiveness. So those are some of the things that we try to do on set, you know? And, and it's sometimes it's difficult, you know, because there's so much money on, at stake and, you know, or, you know, you're sleep deprived. I'm sleeping two hours a day generally with those situations. And, you know, um, and uh, yeah, so you really, we really value though the people and we go to bat for them and we make it an environment where they can bring their kids, um, you know, and we try to try to also push for diversity. You know, when you look at our crew photos, some people say, you know, people have said to me, in fact, there's not a production that we do that people don't say, that's the most diverse crew I've ever worked on. And we are like, really? Because there's like just not enough. So the, the point is, is that, um, so we really try to bring all those elements together. And um, yeah, and I think that people appreciate it. Well, I, you know, I love the Toronto Black Film Festival and it's an outgrowth of the Montreal Black Film Festival. And so um, these, th this kind of festival is so important to bring uh, films and people together from all over the world who appreciate uh, diverse films, because the reality is is that um, we don't we don't get a lot of non Hollywood films, and we know what Hollywood looks like or has looked like for the most part. So that means that unless you're seeking it out, you're not getting these kind of diverse um, uh, films and projects out there. And you're also not connecting with people, um, you know, diverse people or people who are open to diversity on screen. Um, so I'm excited to be a part of that. And um, Suds and I, I'm doing a master class with my partner. We own our production company together. We work together. Mm -hmm. We're actually married. We got kids. So it's a bit of a family affair. But what we want to do is we want to break down 
what our path was and offer some concrete examples as well as concrete ideas of what to do and what to pursue. Talk about, a bit about what's realistic and what's not realistic, you know, and hopefully through um, that uh, masterclass, uh, both inform and inspire. And, you know, it's interesting, um, you know, um, our, our one of our, our, um, our mantra, ours is um, to inspire and entertain. And I think that um, what we want to do through our work are those things. We, you know, we're in an industry, it's a business. So you need to entertain the people. You need to make them want to see the thing, the film, the project, the, the, you know, the TV program. Um, so you need to entertain them. So create projects, work that can do that, but also work that is deeper, that will inspire people to want to be a filmmaker or to want to tell stories or to write or to inspire people to do something, to take on something, you know? Um, I know that um, how I got into film was by being inspired by Spike Lee. And so I hope that through our work, we can do that. And so I think the workshop will have a, a bunch of that stuff. And, uh, you know, and also, um, you know, really try to give the audience some concrete steps, some concrete things to do to move further uh, into the industry. So for everyone out there, have a beautiful Valentine's Day. <laughs>